Hey, what is happening, guys? What's going on, YouTube? My name is Johnny. You've tuned into Rules for Rebels, and you are back for another episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Uh, welcome back. We're doing episode 58 today, and today's episode is going to be focusing on an Amazon FBA business, which is still growing, but is starting to bring in some money. Now, I'm not sure exactly how long this episode is going to take me to record here, but I'm noticing right now from my notes that uh, it's probably going to little, run a little bit longer than normal. And a reason for that, this actually, this episode is actually about a, a buddy of mine, um, so I have a little bit more insight into his business and kind of you know the the entire story so that's kind of why we're probably going to run a little bit long today but uh let's get right on into it so today's story illustrates some important points about fba as well as side hustles and entrepreneurship in general uh things like product selection working with partners and more specifically even working with family uh today's side hustler doesn't really come from the world of entrepreneurship he doesn't follow the blogs and online stuff so he came from kind of a different angle than and kind of a fresh perspective on amazon fba and I think that's going to be kind of an interest, kind of interesting for you guys to hear. And what I mean by that is where myself and I know a lot of you guys kind of follow a lot of the same um, online entrepreneurs and things like that. If I'm sitting in on a YouTube live stream without fail, anytime I comment, I'll notice at least two or three people, um, whether it be, you know, Mitchy Boy, Vogeltron, Latanya, um, uh, Joseph Capola, you know, I'm always running into people that I know on these forums so, or on these live streams and things like that. So I know a lot of you guys are into the same kind of stuff as myself. And uh, the gentleman in today's side hustle story isn't really into the world of entrepreneurship. So he, I think he kind of maybe comes at this from a different angle than us. And it might uh, might kind of enlighten us on, on the kind of maybe how to do things differently. So today's story is about Nate Monaco from Lombard, Illinois. Uh, I know Nate personally. So again, I have a bit more insight into this story than I normally do. And I've actually helped him with a lot of aspects of his business. So I've kind of seen it grow along the way. Now, Nate's day job is as an accountant. His family has been in the accounting business for years, and he's pretty much always known that he was going to be an accountant and one day take over the family business. Uh, he doesn't really consider himself an entrepreneur, more so a businessman and a professional, though I would argue that anybody who owns a business is an entrepreneur. And I think that oftentimes maybe somebody like a doctor or an accountant views himself more as their profession, uh, profession uh, than an entrepreneur, though at the end of the day, if you're running your own business, you are an entrepreneur. Now, the reason I bring this up is I think Nate comes at Amazon FBA uh, product selection and even entrepreneurship in general from a little bit of a different angle from the rest of us who oftentimes maybe watch a lot of YouTube videos, keep up with entrepreneurship forums and so forth and so on. And I think he brings a different outlook and a bit of a fresh perspective. So Nate's an accountant, so obviously he knows numbers and he's also very analytical. So he can dig into a business or a product or even Amazon analytic data and have pretty good insight into whether a business idea is viable uh, and whether you know a business or a product will be profitable. So that's a strength that he brings to the table. Now, Nate never really had any plans to get into FBA or any hustles, but one day his cousin approached him and said he had a friend, he and a friend of his were starting a business. The business wasn't solely focused on FBA, but FBA was gonna be a large part of it. They knew someone else who had started a homewares and a betting line and they kind of realized there was money in it and they thought that maybe they could do it better. So the three of them teamed up and, and the business was born. Now here's what's interesting about their story. Being an accountant, Nate worked with many business owners doing their books. Some of them own hotels, senior care centers, and other businesses which need the items that he's selling. Before even deciding to fully launch into this business and order inventory, he called in a few favors and basically got some commitments from some of these companies to buy his product once it came out. So he had sales lined up before he even rolled it out. Now, obviously not all of us have these contexts and have the luxury of knowing we have clients lined up before we even order our product. However, in the case of Nick, he knew that at the end of the year, these businesses would often have to spend money to either drop themselves into a lower tax bracket or in other cases with certain businesses, departments need to spend money um, if they have money for, like in excess to their budget. Because if you don't spend part of your budget, typically you, you lose it the next year. So a lot of times certain departments at companies and things will spend, um, you know, an excess part of their budget that they don't need just because they don't want to get that part of the budget cut for the next year. So because Nick's product doesn't expire or perish, Nick knew that companies could order a lot of his product in advance. And even if they don't use it for a year or two, it's still perfectly good. Now, this is an important aspect of how Nick went about uh, went about this differently than other entrepreneurs. While chatting and preparing for this story, Nick mentioned to me 
how when he was deciding to move forward, he would occasionally check out a YouTube video about FBA or UPCs or whatever else. And one thing he noticed and kind of critiqued was that he thought many entrepreneurs doing FBA were kind of stretching to find a product. He said it almost seemed like they knew they wanted to do FBA and they had to find a product. So they were really kind of reaching for something. And many of these products, in his opinion, weren't really that promising or weren't really that viable. Now, Nick is somewhat secretive about his business. I told him I wouldn't give away the exact product or the name, so I apologize for being a bit vague here. Uh, Nick did, however, touch on product selection. He said the product he chose to sell is something people need, both households as in individuals, as well as businesses and institutions, i.e. hotels, hospitals, senior care centers, etc., all need this item. It's not something that we want. It's something that we actually need. So that, that was the first thing that he was looking for. Secondly, he said his product doesn't really have brand loyalty. Now, I can see this in some ways as being a negative thing because if people aren't loyal to other brands, they probably won't be loyal to yours. However, in the same way, it's also what allowed him to break into his business. If you, you know, I'll give an example. If you guys were to go shopping for a tent, you're probably going to look for a Coleman tent or a North Face tent or maybe even an Ozark Trail tent if you're on a budget. But very few people are going to buy Frank's tent, right? Now, I doubt anybody would name their friend their tent, Frank's tent, but you, you get the point, right? People with certain products, people are going to buy brands that they know and not brands that they've never heard of. With Nick's brand, well, marketing and presentation and naming the brand and the logo and everything was an important part of his product. Um, it's not as if somebody's going to be hesitant to buy his brand because they're not familiar with it, because the nature of this product is that nobody really is loyal to one particular brand. You just buy it because you need it. Nick said the work and the heavy lifting mostly happened early on. He said finding suppliers was overwhelming and complicated. Product packaging took him, him months. And after going through a few different supply, and he had to go through a few different suppliers to finally get it right. The process of getting a UPC, which could be used in retail, was costly and complicated as well. And one thing I wanted to mention about that, like if you're only selling on Amazon, you can buy used or secondhand um, or bulk UPCs. If you want to go into retail, typically you have to get your own PC, you, your own UPC, and that's something that he wants to do down, down the line. So he had to spend a little bit more, and it was a little bit more complicated to initially get set up than you know just going on, on eBay or codeupc.net and buying a UPC. Nick's product was also in a gated category, and he had no history and no track record of selling on Amazon, so getting ungated was also tough. However, what he wound up, doing, wound up doing for that was actually hiring a company who helped him work with Amazon to get his product live. Uh, Nick's first order he placed for just under $15,000 worth of inventory which, with his supplier, and that came to about 1,000 units, which means the base price of his product, um, or I should say the cost of his product, is about $15 per unit. Uh, he ordered a thousand units, and depending on exactly which product you buy from him, um, it sells from anywhere from twenty nine dollars to I think as much as forty nine, maybe fifty nine on the high end. Uh, he had his product sent directly into Amazon FBA and began selling. As far as challenges, Nick said his biggest challenge has been getting sales and building reviews. He's enlisted family and friends to order products and leave reviews. He's run PPC or pay per click advertising, and he's even done some product giveaways. One problem he ran into, however, and one challenge that he faced is uh, he, he has his competitors ordering his product, returning it, and then leaving negative reviews. He said it's clear it's his competitors who are doing this as they've done the same thing to other competitors and have literally left word for word the same exact reviews on the other competitor sites as well. He's brought this to the attention of Amazon, but they've been kind of slow to act or really do anything about it. Uh, Nick has, however, branched out to other sites as well. He sells, sells on Jet.com, Wayfair.com, House.com, and Overstock, and I think maybe even a few others as well. A large part of his business, and probably the biggest part of his business, is business-to-business -business sales. He said this is something he sees many other e-commerce uh, sellers and retailers forgetting about. Well, the internet is great, and well, there is still a real world out there where people pick up the phone and make sales calls, and where people visit someone and look them in the eye and shake their hand and sell to them in person. And while he does bring in some Amazon sales, more sales are coming from hotels, nursing homes, etc. than they are coming from online. And for those sales, he actually uses his Amazon's multi-channel fulfillment to send a product or send the inventory to his customers. He avoids final value fees uh, or sales fees on these sales. However, he is still paying for the fulfillment fees. And uh, seeing as how he has a full-time job and a career, he just doesn't have the time to ship out these orders himself. So he, uh, he kind of keeps his hands off and he's pretty content with how that goes. 
Uh, we talked about his numbers. He said the business is still in the early stages and growing, so numbers do fluctuate. He said their best month yet is $7,500 in net revenue. However, he also has month where they only make about $1,500. Now, this was his first stab at something like this, so I asked him if he would continue doing it. He said the money isn't huge, but it's enough to keep him interested and make it worthwhile, so he will be continuing. Now, Nick works with his cousin and his cousin's friend. So he and his cousin have since had a bit of a falling out over issues unrelated to the business, uh, but that has made working together a little bit challenging. He said at this point, the business is fairly passive outside of business to business sales. Uh, so it's really not as if they're all having to work together or talk on a daily or even weekly basis. Uh, the only thing to do really outside of sales is keep inventory coming in, which can be done with a phone call or an email to his Chinese supplier in just a matter of minutes. Now, this kind of brought up uh, the subject of partnerships. Nick says, looking back, he doesn't know if he would take on partners. He said, well, it's nice having some camaraderie and some emotional support and, and sharing the workload do a bit, especially early in the process. He said, to some extent, at times, there can be too many cooks in the kitchen. <coughs> he also said that while his career is accounting and he has no intention of doing this full time, even if it becomes, a, uh, becomes successful, that splitting the money up three ways requires a business to be that much more successful. $5,000 to one person is a pretty nice paycheck, and one person may actually even be able to live off that. However, when you're chopping it up three ways, that's only about fifteen or 1600 bucks per person, which again, it's nothing to turn your nose up at, but it's obviously much less money as well. I asked Nick what advice he would have for others going into Amazon FBA or trying to launch products in general. He said product selection. He said he personally sees so many people wanting to start a business, roll out a product, etc., that rather than picking a really great product, which has a lot of promise, he sees people kind of finding the first thing that seems mildly interesting and pushing ahead anyways, just because they want to get started. He said his product isn't really fun or sexy, but it's something people need and something people are going to buy. He also said you have to go out and get sales. He said during his brief time of trying to find some advice and guidance online and on YouTube, he found too many people sit back and expect sales to come to them. He's not as savvy when it comes to online marketing, pay-per-click advertising, but what he did and what anybody can do, he said, is pick up a phone or pound a pavement and go make sales. Now, this isn't really relevant to necessarily every product out there, but if it's not relevant to your product, maybe you need to rethink your product selection because you have a pretty limited audience. And I think an example of this might be like, if you're selling like bracelets or t-shirts or something like that, well, I suppose you could hypothetically go out and get a retail store to carry it. It's probably not that likely. However, in his case, you know, he's selling, a, I, don't know, I guess we'll leave it at a bedding or a homeware product that hotels, nursing homes, senior care centers need to sell. He even said he's reaching out to and trying to find some of these uh, like government fulfillment sites where I guess with if uh, the city or state or county needed an item for prisons or you know, hospitals, whatever else, they may potentially use him to source it. So, you know, his product has a very broad market, both individuals, individuals, as well as businesses, as well as government institutions. And if your product doesn't have that kind of reach, you may be at a little bit of a disadvantage. So a few comments about today's story before we cut out. I think today's story is an interesting one. Uh, Nate is a bright guy. He had some things going for him, like some money to throw around into the business and some connections he could call on. However, in regards to being internet savvy and being a marketer, that's definitely not his strength, nor something he's even really interested in doing. And I think that illustrates one last point I wanted to, to discuss. When you start a business, or to some extent, even more so with a side hustle, you can invest time and energy in place of money, or to some extent, you can invest money um, in place of some of your time and energy, or you can do a combination of the two. Well, Nate has his strengths. I think most of you guys who watch my channel and whom I've spoken with are light years ahead of Nate in terms of like marketing and just internet savviness. So you have something going for you. If he can do it, you can do it. One other thing I'd like to add is in regards to building a business where Amazon is an element of the business opposed to building a business where Amazon is the business. Uh, I think I made a video the other day. Amazon should be a piece of the puzzle, not the entire puzzle. Over the years and even in the last few months, my interest in Amazon selling and Amazon FBA has dwindled a bit, and you may have noticed that by me putting out less videos on the subject. As I often say, the days of selling one-off items while, while still possible isn't what it used to be. These days, in my humble opinion, Amazon is a sales channel and not your entire business, and in many instances it's helpful, and in others it's downright necessary to stick within niches 
or build a brand in order to stay competitive and consistently make money. So me and my business partner have been on Amazon for years. We have some products that, you know, just because of how long we've been on there, we have such a presence built up. We have such a high BSR score. We have so many reviews that in a sense, we can almost kind of coast and count on sales. Um, I will say, you know, we, we've rolled out a, a few products in the past year and well, we always manage to get our money back. A lot of times it's, you know, I don't know, maybe some people would be content with it, but in many of these instances, it's not even worth continuing to order inventory as passive as it is um, because the money is just, you know, not really even big enough to take away our attention from, from other things. So um, I, I do have one more Amazon product coming out that I'll probably be rolling out in the next two to three months. I'm going to kind of wait till we kind of get through the heart of winter here so that people are actually kind of thinking about this product. But yeah, kind of my strategy moving forward is being much more focused on sticking within specific niches and building brands much more so than it is just like finding one off random products to sell, which used to be very profitable and which I used to find both, you know, fun as well as profitable to do. So uh, anyhow, guys, that's kind of really all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's side hustle story. I hope you were inspired. I hope you learned something. And until next time, I'm Johnny. This is Rules for Rebels and Side Hustle Tuesdays signing out. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.